The technology supporting LNG fuel for heavy-duty vehicles is developing rapidly as more companies recognize the environmental and economic benefits of this attractive energy source. Fueling an LNG-powered vehicle is not difficult and the process is becoming more streamlined and straightforward. Because LNG is stored at or near minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit, fueling nozzles and exposed piping can be extremely cold. Contact with these surfaces can cause freeze burns to expose skin. To protect from this hazard, you will wear personal protective equipment. A face shield and safety glasses protect from the potential but unlikely releases of the super cold vapor or liquid. Thermally insulated gloves make it possible to handle the cold hoses and valves. And a long sleeved shirt, long pants and boots help protect the skin from accidental exposure. There are two main types of LNG systems. Active systems have a pump inside the fuel tank that feeds fuel to the engine. Passive systems use pressure to feed the fuel. Both store the fuel in insulated tanks, capable of keeping it in a liquid state for up to a week or more. The High Pressure Direct Injection, or HPDI system, is one of the most common active LNG systems. It usually has a fuel tank on each side of the tractor, with fueling ports and pressure gauges for both tanks mounted on the driver's side tank. Taking a few precautions before you begin fueling helps ensure that the whole process goes smoothly. First, be sure the truck is parked close enough to the dispenser to avoid stretching or bending the fueling hose. Place a chalk in front of a driver's side wheel to make sure the driver doesn't leave unexpectedly. Ask the driver for the keys. This will prevent him or her from driving off too soon and damaging the truck and the fuel dispenser. Next, attach a cable to the tank grounding lug to provide a ground. Finally, when you take the dust caps off the fueling ports, clean them out with compressed air to remove any moisture or debris. Debris in the ports can cause leaks or unnecessary wear on the equipment. Do the same thing with the fueling nozzle and then attach it to the driver's side fueling port. In spite of the insulation, the temperature of the LNG in the tank gradually increases. As it does, it converts to gas and increases the pressure in the tank. Check the pressure on the gauges on the fuel tank shroud. If either is above the limit set for your station, you'll need to remove some vapor from that tank before adding the liquid fuel. To reduce the pressure, open the tank shroud and then open the green vent to station valve. The vapor will vent out through the hose you've connected to the fueling port. When the pressure reaches the designated level, close the valve and press the LNG button on the dispenser. Fuel circulates from the storage tank for several seconds to cool down the dispenser, and when it is sufficiently cooled, fuel begins flowing to the vehicle. The dispenser shuts off when the tank is full. Wait about 30 seconds before removing the nozzle to give the pressure in the hose time to dissipate. Open the nozzle handle slowly to prevent damage to the seals. Next, attach the nozzle to the passenger side tank fueling port and follow the same steps to vent if necessary. Press the pause resume button to start filling the second tank. When it is full, return the fueling nozzle to its receptacle on the dispenser, reseat the protective caps, and complete the necessary paperwork. Passive LNG systems use a slightly different method of injecting fuel into the engine. They require a higher level of pressure than active tanks and use this pressure to deliver fuel from the tank to the engine. A heat exchanger in the fuel line uses engine coolant to raise the temperature of the LNG and turn it into a gas. The steps to fuel a passive system are similar to the active system. The biggest difference is in the way you lower pressure. Chart Industries makes one of the most common passive LNG systems. You can identify a chart tank by the venting port on top of the engine shroud. When you need to reduce pressure, attach the venting hose to this port and then open the vent to station valve. When the pressure comes down to the required level, close the valve and follow the same steps as when fueling an active system. Clean the fueling ports and nozzle with compressed air, attach the fueling nozzle, and start the dispenser. When you finish, disconnect the grounding cable, remove the wheel chalk, and give the receipt and the keys to the driver. Specific procedures and equipment can vary from station to station, but LNG fueling is safe and easy when you understand the requirements and follow the recommended precautions.